when a two-year-old's parents pass away over a span of 12 days. His sister takes an unexpected turn. Molly Schultz was an ordinary 25-year-old not too long ago. She was. In reality. Really fortunate. Molly wed Tim. The love of her life. A few years ago. Besides. She had grudgingly accepted two baby twins and adjusted to motherhood very well. Then. In a matter of minutes in March 2016. Everything in her life changed. She first learned about the death of her father's wife. Who was also her half-brother's mother. Then disaster struck once more. When Schultz became involved in a family tragedy beyond anything seen in a movie. Her once normal life took on a dramatically increased level of drama. Schultz and her family experienced an incredibly significant set of difficulties that turned their entire existence upside down. You will definitely be in tears after what happened next. Schultz was a typical Spokane. Washington. Woman raising her children at home. It was truly a match made in heaven when Molly and Tim connected on match. Calm in 2013. After falling in love. The two had a wonderful relationship. When Schultz discovered she was pregnant after three weeks of dating, the two felt it was only fitting to move in together. Eight months after the birth of their first kid, the couple discovered they were expecting a second child. The couple eloped prior to the birth of their second daughter. They later gave birth to two twins as well. However, the entire life of this lovely family of five was going to be completely upended. Molly Schultz and her father shared a tight bond. He had a strong belief in her and brought her up to be the best version of herself. When Molly gave birth to her first daughter, he was even present in the delivery room. Furthermore, despite the fact that Molly was on the West Coast and her father was in Michigan, they maintained constant communication and presence in one another's life. Life then dealt her a terrifying one-two blow. In the short space of a few months, Molly's father was diagnosed with an uncommon terminal illness in addition to the unexpected death of his wife. Molly made the only sensible decision and bought herself a ticket. Realizing that her father had just a few weeks to live. Since her twins were still nursing, Molly had to bring them along. Sadly, her husband had to stay with their two other daughters. So she was forced to travel alone. Molly was aware that the trip from Spokane to Detroit would not be easy. Molly had to travel via Minneapolis in order to reach Detroit since she was unable to find a direct flight. Airport connections are notoriously challenging. Often, after sprinting the whole length of the airport, you discover that your next flight is delayed. Or even worse, you have to spend hours in a dull terminal. Imagine going through this exhausting process by yourself while taking care of two infants. Molly Schultz had to do this on her flight from her house to her father's. The three-hour journey to Minneapolis was bearable because Molly and her twins persevered and gave it their all. Molly had to get to Michigan now. Molly Schultz and her kids have a rather rigid routine when she's at home. For eating, playing, and sleeping. There are set times. Molly was suddenly unable to perform all of her regular tasks. The issue was that this adjustment also affected her twins, who were with her. Since they were just seven months old, any disturbance could cause them harm. Issues would always arise if Molly failed to feed them or put them to sleep on time. Molly was going somewhere she had never gone before. What kind of schedule would she have? Would she have enough time to feed her offspring the way they knew how? How would they adapt? Young Molly had all these questions burning in her head. Molly arrived in Minneapolis with her twins following a three-hour journey. 
sadly. There would be no fast connection with this. Rather, they experienced an extended stopover. I ended up laying blankets on the airport floor for them to roll around. Molly explains. Everything started to go wrong at the conclusion of the lengthy layover that we had. Molly started feeling tired. As did her twins. Molly could handle. But her little girls could not. Molly grew increasingly upset along with them. While managing the care of my grumpy twins. I felt like a ticking time bomb of emotions. My heart was exploding. The three of them finally boarded the flight to Detroit after what seemed like an eternity. Unfortunately, it was difficult to calm the restless twins. Molly was at her breaking point. And the two were crying all the time. These two young people were taking flight for the first time ever. Furthermore, it wasn't how Molly had imagined it would be. The flight was. Fortunately, little less than two hours. After just 100 minutes of hardship, Molly would have to hold on tight in bravery to bring it all to an end. But occasionally, a hundred minutes might seem like an eternity. The flight went well for the first 20 minutes. Molly was alone with her infants. And they were both happy and entertaining. Everything appeared to be ideal. And every person who passed them smiled back. Things started to go a little differently after takeoff. The babies started to cry and would not stop. They started to feel uneasy and agitated. Molly remarked. I knew they wanted to be nurses. I just didn't know how to do that on a plane with no pillows to help support us. Molly tried everything to comfort them. But the sobbing would not stop. Molly started to feel the effects of the flight's circumstances. I was so emotionally and mentally spent. All I wanted was to be in his arms and off this plane. I had no one to turn to when I needed assistance. The flight attendants were kind and helpful. But they were also responsible for specific tasks. On board. Everything appeared to have gone wrong. It was a brief journey. But any parent knows that when a child starts weeping uncontrollably, it's next to impossible to quiet them down. Especially if the parent is feeling worried. The respite Molly needed had finally come. Thank goodness. A lady suddenly rose from her place behind them. Slid into the empty seat next Molly. And snatched the infant who was bouncing on her lap. No need to inquire. Thus she refrained from doing so. It was clear to her that Molly relied on her. With a bottle in hand. Molly watched as the mother rocked her daughter gently in her arms while crooning lullabies. The flight was tolerable for Molly Schultz because of this incredible display of kindness. Thanks to this generous individual. Molly was able to begin her gradual recovery and put her life back in order. The one thing Molly wishes she had done differently is to have a photograph to remember this woman by. Wherever you are. Airplane Angel. Thank you. It felt like an eternity before the plane touched down. At long last. Molly could see her father as they disembarked from the ship. Now young Molly and her twins had the added burden of driving to her dad's place. As if the long day weren't taxing enough. We can only assume that the entire journey was consumed with reminiscences and flashbacks. As she attempted to jog her memory of her father. The time Molly spent with him was limited. Even though she had no idea how much longer he had. She was certain that his death was drawing near. Molly was attempting to get over the travel and get herself ready to see her sick and grieving father. Who would finally welcome her home after all this time. Finally. Molly Schultz made it to her dad's house. Her heart was crushed to pieces by what she discovered. 
She had a story about her father picking her up and spinning her around once. He had shrunk to the point that he was extremely frail and barely holding on. No matter how he looked. Her dad was always her dad. I rested my head on his skeletal chest. But it made no difference. I was told that my best friend, the man I loved with all my heart, was dying. She said in a blog post about the event. But Molly had no clue that her dad's illness was the first of many. She was about to find out that her hasty departure had been necessary for more than one reason. Molly reached her father's house after a long day of flying and driving. She was shocked and devastated at first. But then she learned about his illness and how short his time was. Stage 4 pancreatic cancer was Molly's dad's diagnosis. There was almost no hope for his recovery. He was gravely sick. You only have months to live. The doctors told him. The news would be devastating under any circumstances. But her father was quite young, just 50 years old, to have such a prognosis. After discovering more about his sickness, Molly realized that the future would be emotionally challenging for both herself and her rarely seen young half-brother. Smith only 12 days passed after Molly's arrival in Detroit before her father passed away. Even though Molly looks back on those days with gratitude, she can only imagine how terrifying they were for her at the time. Molly felt odd and melancholy during those days. I rested my head on his skeletal chest during one of our final embraces so I could feel his heartbeat, which was slower than mine. The experience was so alien to me that it felt like a dream. I had always imagined my dad's plumb chest. But that wasn't it. This one felt strange and chilly. For millions of others. The feelings that Molly experienced are a reality while dealing with cancer in the family. It was surprising to find that Molly's dad appeared just as intelligent in his final weeks. Her father maintained his dignity throughout. Just as he did his whole life. Despite his gloomy appearance. But Molly picked up on something that wasn't right as they were talking. It seemed like her dad was trying to tell her something. But he just couldn't find the right words. In a devastating account of her father's last days. Molly wrote. His eyes were starting to turn yellow meaning his liver was starting to fail. Still, his thinking was as sharp as ever while he sat there. My heart was in a million pieces on the ground from the moment's agony and fulfillment. After a while, he eventually confided in Molly about the duty he intended her to carry out. Molly's father started relating tales to her about Smith. Her half-brother. You see. Smith Schultz is the kid of Molly's father and his new wife. Born in 2013. Smith was a happy and healthy baby who had joy and happiness throughout his first two years of life living with his loving parents. Despite being her half-brother, Molly didn't really know Smith well because she lived in Spokane, Washington. And he lived in Detroit, Michigan. Molly only got to meet him once when he was very small because of the cross-country distance. But things were going to alter dramatically soon. The decision Molly and her father made regarding Smith was one of the most important ones. When Smith was barely two years old, poor little Smith had to see his father slowly deteriorate. At that point, Molly's father expressed to her his final desire which was for her to adopt Smith. He was opposed to his son being placed in an orphanage or, worse, the adoption system. Without knowing what would happen to his son, he could not pass away in peace. Since she was the only person left for Smith, Molly readily consented to take on full legal care of him. There was urgent work to be done in determining Smith's destiny. 
we considered different options. Talked about the pros and cons of different scenarios. But collectively, as a family, decided that I would raise him. She explained. We can only imagine how difficult this choice was for Molly's father. Regretfully, the entire undertaking would be significantly more challenging. Molly explains that everything had to be done swiftly because her father's time was running out. Not only was it imperative that they move quickly because of their limited time, but it was also important to protect her father's dignity. It only took a few days which gave him the opportunity to be as focused and present as possible when talking about intricate legal issues. They eventually met with a lawyer and proceeded to sign a plethora of forms. Within a few hours, Molly had taken custody of Smith, and their father had become Smith's grandfather instead of his father. On Friday night, March 11, 2016, we left the attorney's office and had to wait until Monday for the judge to sign the paperwork. Which she eventually did. I now have full legal guardianship of Smith thanks to these paperwork. The judge's signature on the paperwork made Molly Smith's exclusive and complete guardian. Molly couldn't wait to tell her father that she was feeling both happy and sad at the same time. Oh. Molly. That makes me so happy. My dad said to me when I told him the wonderful news. I adore you a lot. Her father would not live to hear these lovely words again. He went to bed that night with the knowledge that his kid was safe and could now at last move on in peace. Molly realized why her father had clung to life for so long. He prioritized his son's needs before his own and he died only when it was legally appropriate. With the death of his father, Smith had to attend the two most significant funerals of his life in a matter of two weeks. He lost both of his parents while he was too young to really comprehend what was happening. Fortunately for him, Molly and Tim were both there to guide him through those times. Molly traveled alone to Detroit but Tim picked her up along with her other kids so they could go to her father's burial. When Molly talks about those terrifying times, she tells how Smith unintentionally turned into an orphan in a matter of days. This was not anticipated by anyone. I think we all kept going through the motions. Unable to process what exactly was happening. After the funeral, it was time to return to the West a few days later. This time, Molly was traveling with Smith in addition to her adored spouse and their four girls. Throughout the whole flight, Molly and Tim were concerned about Smith's reaction. After growing up as an only kid, he was forced to live with four sisters in a shared home. What kind of adjustments would their daughters make? Now that they were living with Smith, they didn't really know him all that well. Even though Molly and Tim wanted to be strong for their children and Smith, they were still grieving and going through a lot of changes. Thank goodness. The first several days at home with the family were breezes. For Molly and Tim Schultz. This was a huge relief. Smith was pleased to integrate into the Schultz family. And his sisters were overjoyed to have him live with them. Living under the same roof for the first few crucial days went smoothly. The most crucial days. When the kids had to accept one another. Passed smoothly. But the family later battled to discover balance and common ground. There was an undeniable bond between Smith and the girls. Something terrible was about to happen that would ruin the joy of the new family. An unforeseen legal struggle started when Smith reached Spokane. Having Smith adopted in a foreign state was a hard process because he is a native of Michigan. Because of this, Molly Schultz and her half-brother Smith had to take many flights between Washington and Michigan. But every time they showed up, 
disaster struck. More importantly, the court date was postponed. After nearly a year, a judge in Michigan finally gave the go-ahead to move the lawsuit to Washington. The Schultz couple felt a great sense of comfort because they were no longer separated on such important days. Tim and Molly Schultz were finally able to schedule an adoption date after what felt like an eternity. The world's best news. Tim and Molly would formally become Smith's parents. And he could finally join the family after more than a year. As the big day drew near, the anticipation in the family grew. Due to the expedited handling of the case in Washington following its release from the Michigan courts, the deadline was approaching quickly. I think Molly, Tim, and Smith can all agree that the way things worked out in Washington's legal system was pure chance. On June 16, 2017, the world's longest wait came to an end. Everyone in the family, including the five kids, is overjoyed. Even though they were already a close-knit family, receiving official recognition was a huge deal. I entered the courthouse hoping desperately for things to be finalized. But I remained vigilant in my hopes. Molly recalled. Even when the truth is staring you in the face, your mind may still confound you in the most amusing ways. He was in desperate need of a family since his parents were gone. Why should I be so worried that the judge will rule against me? If you happen to be a Northwester, you know that the weather is never going to be perfect. The Schultz family wore dresses and short skirts in honor of Adoption Day. As if it were a sunny spring day. They planned for a sunny celebration and hired a photographer. Naturally, they encountered precipitation. Molly Schultz, who never gave up hope, interpreted the downpour as a blessing bestowed upon them on this extraordinary and enchanted day. The North Pacific weather didn't dampen their spirits since they were too joyful. The flawless results of the family photo shoot that took place over the day captured their pure joy. The day's highlights, meanwhile, did not end with the images. The Schultz family sincerely hoped that their court appearance would be their last. It had become a year-long nightmare from what had begun as a simple procedure. Knowing that this was a watershed time for Smith, Molly remembers how quiet and reserved he was. Thankfully, the judge they saw was kind and helpful to the family. Finally, after an agonizingly long wait, she gave her approval for the adoption. Molly and Tim, after the hearing, requested permission to return to the judge's chamber for a picture op. The one who restored harmony to their family was remembered in this way. Prior to Adoption Day, Smith spent 458 days living with Tim and Molly Schultz. Though astronomical, the happiness it brought to their loved ones was immeasurable. Adoption is a lengthy and complicated procedure. Therefore this is unfortunately a common occurrence. Tim and Molly loved Smith without condition and attended to his every need even before he was formally recognized as a member of the family. Living with his kind relatives and having a strong support structure helped Smith tremendously during one of the most difficult experiences anyone could go through. Especially a youngster. As a family. Molly and her husband will always remember those 458 days of love. Looking back. Molly Schultz saw the signs that she would have a far larger role in Smith's life than she had anticipated. His parents contacted Molly to get her thoughts on a name for the newborn son. They named him Smith after the name Molly chose for him. Another clue was that even before his biological mother passed away, Smith still referred to Molly as Mama. Never by her name. Molly seems to have known the whole time that he would be spending a lot of time with her. 
even though they didn't spend a lot of time together. Molly and Smith formed a close bond from the day he was born. Adoption Day And every day that before and followed it were undoubtedly not only joyous occasions, but also brimming with recollections of Molly, Smith's father, and, of course, Smith's mother. The terrible events in Smith's life cannot and ought not to be forgotten. Smith will always be able to remember his lovely and devoted parents thanks to Molly and Tim, who will always preserve their memory. Fortunately, Smith and Molly have a wonderful father to cherish who cherished them both unconditionally and wished for nothing but the best for them. Smith was finally able to exhale in relief after being formally adopted. Even though Smith was little at the time of this complete life transition, you never underestimate the depth of understanding that a child may have. Smith was aware of a significant shift in his surroundings and way of life even though he was quite little when his parents passed away. He was aware of their absence. Fortunately for Smith, Tim and Molly adore him and treat him like their own kid. The bond between Smith and his four sisters is doubly fortunate. Despite having lived with the family for more than a year, Smith still needed some time to get used to being legally part of the Schultz family. He felt genuinely at home in the family now that he was a permanent part. He was now subject to some additional regulations. He was required to act in the same manner as his sisters and to adhere to the rigid eating and sleeping schedule. Even though it required some effort and time, the family eventually struck a healthy balance and developed a lovely rhythm. This proves that all families are lovely despite the fact that they may not always match your expectations. Everyone has the ability to have a happy and full life with effort and commitment. The seven-member family is happier than ever right now. Currently enrolled in preschool, Smith is content with his life. He is surrounded by four sisters, two of whom are younger than he is, and all of them have a positive impact on him. Smith truly adapted to his new family after the initial time of adjustment and is now a true brother to his sisters. Molly and Tim are proud of their little clan and are happy to have this great boy in the family. After watching the story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.